I ain't never switched on the fan. Hey, always gotta stick to the plan. Hey, I ain't never switched on the fan. Hey, always gotta stick to the plan. Hey, yeah, I'm from the west when they throw their hood up. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm from the west when they throw their hood up. I've been, I've been made new, all white with the blood. blue. I've been made new, all white with the blood. <laughs> Welcome to We're All Online, man. We're so excited you're here. It's not fun that uh, our We're One gathering tonight has been canceled. It's not fun that that happened, but what it is fun is we still get to dive into the Word of God. We still get to learn. Um, for any events or anything that you say, oh man, I don't know, I haven't bought my ticket or I, haven't, I don't know what's coming up, I just want to say, hey, go to weareoneyouth.com and you can get all of the info there. Uh, you can check it out and we'd love to see you uh, partner with us on any events or anything we have coming up and it's gonna be awesome. Let's dive into the Word of God. Uh, we've been talking about this uh, idea of this is who we are. This is the series we've been in in past days. He's been just like tossing these bomb messages at us. Uh, you can check those out also at YouTube on YouTube uh, as you're watching this. Go, go watch a couple of the sermons from the last couple weeks, man. They've been so good. Uh, the first week he talked about this idea of 2020 and how it's important to have vision for the things in our life. And then he talked about last week uh, this idea of Jesus as our core value. He's the foundational core value. And we've been, we're gonna keep talking about all these core values of who we are. This is our DNA. This is what makes us us. Uh, this is what um, the foundations of who we are. So when you're talking to someone, it's not just like, oh, we are one. They're, they're a bunch of people who h hang out, I think, and they worship, and it's so much more than that. Um, and so we wanna give you practical ways to be like, when someone says, who are you? What do you believe? What do you, what do you hold to be true? We can go, these are the things. These are the things that we value. And it doesn't mean that there's not more things that we don't value or uh, there's not other things that we find important, but just what it means is these are just things that make us us and that make us unique. And so uh, the first thing we talked about was 2020 and then Jesus. Jesus is period. He's the foundational truth. Um, but today we're gonna be talking a little bit about this idea of serve. Um, I love how we, as a church, we spell serve. It goes S-E-R-V. Um, I don't know the, I don't know actually the 100% the reason why we do it. I just think it looks sweet. Um, and I love that we get to be a part of a church that believes in servanthood. And uh, I, I, I've been asking this question, like, what, what does it mean to serve? Is it just something we say? Is it something catchy? And we have some preconceived notions about what serving is. Uh, that serving is like, well, I help the church. I, I cook I cook meals for the church I do this or we have these uh, ideas about serving as well they don't need help right they're a big church they don't need any more help or uh, they're you know even maybe it's like oh, it's a smaller ministry and it's like oh well oh man I feel so bad I feel like I need to help um, and you have all of these like thoughts and premises and ideas but really it's it boils down to a simple thing that serving is the essence of the gospel message it's not just about coming to a church early. It's not just about um, helping scoop some food out for some people. It's, that's not what it's about. Um, it's truly part of the foundational message. It's echoed through Jesus. Everything that he does, everything he did, and everything that he's continuing to do is all because of this idea of servanthood. You can look throughout the entire Bible, and um, it's all encompassing, this idea of servanthood, that Jesus makes it not only a central message, but the entire Bible, it is a central message. You look at David as uh, he was a servant out in the pasture. You look at Paul as he was in chains and indebted and he served churches around the area. He, he wrote them letters. He did all these things. Servanthood is a super important part. And it, you know, it's, it's too much, honestly, it's too much work to not serve a purpose, right? It's too much work to not have an end game. And why would we come and why would we do all this work? Why would we set up lights and videos and do, do cool things if, if really there genuinely was no end game? If there really genuinely no, was no purpose behind it? Um, we do what we do because we find a purpose. And because we, f and, well, not only have we found a purpose, but the purpose has found us. And not only have we become uh, a part of it, it has become a part of us. And, and you know, it's proven, honestly, 1,000% statistically, it's proven to be it's to be easier to do nothing. <laughs> it is easier to do nothing. Um, it's super easy to do nothing. We could sit at home, literally sit there. I can sit there sometimes and my brain just like, I can click it off and I can do nothing. And it's so easy, but there's, there's no meaning behind that. There's nothing that sustains me. And the reason we serve and the reason why we 
allow ourselves to push forward for the things of God is because I don't want to take the easy route. I don't want to take the route that might be the easiest. I want to take the route that is meaningful. And it's easier to do nothing, but it will never fulfill a purpose in my life. And I want that purpose fulfilled. It's important, and I really want that. It says in Matthew 20, 28, it says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The kingdom hierarchy, the way God sets up the kingdom, is so much different than the way we would perceive it in our, in our earthly mentalities. We perceive in our earthly mentalities that, well, I gotta climb this ladder and go up higher and higher and higher. And it's super important to, to also realize that God does want us to um, succeed at what we do and to excel at what we do and be passionate about what we do. But sometimes succeeding at what we do might mean laying down our desires. It might mean not always doing exactly what we want and doing what God desires for us first. You know, it says in Mark 9, 35, it says, sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be first must be very last and the servant of all. Now, I find this interesting because Jesus didn't say the servant of one person or the servant of another person or the people who are easy to serve. He said the servant of all. If you want to be first in the kingdom of God, he's flipping the whole thing up on its head. He's saying if you want to succeed, you have to allow yourself to let others succeed. And you have to allow yourself to put other people first and make yourself a servant to them. And so when we see Jesus, he's not only telling us these things, but he's actually being the purest example of what it means to recognize servanthood. It says um, later in John, 3, or John 13, 6 through 17, I'm gonna read this whole passage because this is, man, this, this blows my mind how Jesus sets himself up as an example of servanthood. He says, he came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, you are going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, do you not realize what I'm doing? But you do not realize what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you will have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only wash their feet. He's like, I ain't doing that, bro. You, you had a bath today. You took a shower. You're all good. I'm just going to wash your feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you for he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. He was talking about Judas here. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and you call me Lord. And rightly so, for that's what I am. So he declares who he is, for that's what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you up as an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Why did Jesus wash his disciples' feet? He washed his disciples' feet because he, he was showing them an example of what it meant to be a servant. That as the Lord, he said, I understand, I am the Lord, I am your master, but I'm still showing you what it means to truly humble yourself. That the God of the universe came down. And back in the time, washing, washing of feet was a very, uh, was a very uh, lowly position. And people didn't, people didn't do it because uh, they loved to do it. It was something that people despised doing. It'd be like washing toilets today. But yet, doesn't matter. it doesn't matter what the job was. Jesus said, I'm going to do it because I want to show you what it means to truly, truly be a servant. And you might not understand now, but later you will understand. So what I have right here is I have a couple points, some key points that I, w I want to dive into, and I really want to break down servanthood. And I really want to break down what it means to serve, and what it means to be a servant, not of just of God, but of other people. And as we go, I encourage you, take notes. Um, pull up on your notes app, uh, or if you got a pen and paper, man, take some notes. Uh, let's dive in. Uh, it's at point number one. It says this. It says, serving is not a chore, it's a choice. Serving is not a chore, it's a choice. Now, I remember being young, and I remember having to do chores, and some, some of y'all got allowances, uh, some didn't. Uh, we got these gold stars, that we, and these gold stars were like, oh, they were like money to us. Like, 
Uh, <laughs> we were chomping at the bit to get these gold stars, me and my brother, when we were growing up, and we had this board on our, on our wall. And if we got a gold star that day for doing something, for doing our chores, for doing all these things, we, uh, by the end of the week, if we tallied up enough gold stars, my mom had like this treasure chest and we could open it. It was like made out of cardboard. And it was kind of cool when I was young. I was like, this is so awesome. We could open up the treasure chest and inside were things that she had bought, like, uh, like little toys and, and stuff like that. Legos for me, cause I love the Legos dog, you know, nah, <laughs> building those things up. It was awesome. And, uh, we, we would, we would want these things and there was an incentive to do what we had to do. But, but it was still chores. It was still chores. It was still not fun. I hated, oh, to this day, I hated doing the dishes. There was something about sticking my hand in nasty food water that I just didn't like to do. It wasn't fun. It felt like a chore. And we would flip, we'd flip a coin. Me and my brother would flip a coin and be like, okay, let's see who's going to uh, do this chore. And we'd flip a coin. And Somehow, some way, my brother always managed to win. I don't know if he got like a single, like one of those trick coins, or if he was just some mastermind who would like telekinesis or whatever, like he would like m figure it out with his mind, but he would always win every time. And I'd have to, I'd have to do that chore. I'd have to do this chore. Finally, I got so fed up, uh, I started, perp we started doing it around our dad and he'd see us flipping coins. And eventually he would kind of change the game a little bit because usually when you flip a coin and you look at the coin, if you picked heads and it landed on heads, you were scot-free. You didn't have to do the jaw. But my dad, seeing that I always lost because Tom, my brother Thomas is a cheater, he would be like, oh, you won. You get to do the chore. And he'd make the chore the winning prize. And my brother would be like, what? No, 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 no. But we would, st we would look at all these things as chores. And serving, really serving in the, in the mindset of, of Christ isn't about chores. That's not why he gives us things to do. That's not why he asks us to serve. It's not because he wants us to, it's not because he wants to have a list for us to do just to do those things. It's because genuinely he wants us to choose. It's a choice. And when I look at it as, man, I, I get to do this. I get to be a part of this. I, and it's hard work sometimes, man. It's super hard work. But I get to, I get to, be a, be a part of something so much bigger than myself. And that in and of itself is a, is a blessing that I have. And uh, when I look at this idea of serving, uh, in the Bible, a lot of people can try and use this word serve, a servant and slave interchangeably. And they're not, especially in the word of God, they're not interchangeable. Servanthood, listen, servanthood doesn't decrease your value. That's not what it's meant to do. It increases your humility. Servanthood isn't meant to uh, decrease who you are. It's to build you up by humility. And that's the point. It's not about being a slave. Uh, if you look at John 13, when Jesus was talking, what we just read, it says, very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master. He's not saying that the servant and the master aren't on equal levels. They are. God values everyone on the same level, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. But even though people have different positions, it doesn't mean that their values are any different. And what you can do is you can actually, you lay that down, you lay that position down, and you get to see, wow, by doing this, I'm making this choice to not be a slave, but to be a servant to other people. Because a slave is someone who is held against their will. A servant is someone who offers their will. And when we offer our will to God and, to, and to, to be used by him, what he's going to do is he's going to take that and he's going to make that so much better than what we had before. A servant is held against their will, or a slave is held against their will. A servant offers their will. A servant gives freely. They make the choice to do those things. And it's not, the choice isn't always made for them. And God wants to see that choice being made in your life not only with serving other people, but even just with him. He, he wants to see that choice. So serving isn't a chore, it's a choice. Point two, serving shouldn't be a burden, but a blessing. We forget that in order to understand the methods of Jesus, we have to understand his motives sometimes. We have to know why he's doing the things he's doing. He's not just, he didn't just wash their feet to do that. Like there's a reason he, he's, he has a motive behind his method. 
And what we see is he's showing us a way that he's not elevating himself. He's now getting on the level of the people he's with. He's getting on the level with the disciples he's with. And that's a blessing for him. That's something he enjoys doing. I love when a kid comes up to me and I, and I get down on one knee as, uh, as, as you know, I've been trained to do and I get to see them and I get to look at them on eye level. Now it's a blessing. And I don't, when you don't look down on people and when you see them uh, genuinely and you, and you love on them, and that's such a blessing to be a part of the kingdom of God. It's such a blessing. And it should be a blessing to you. And here's why. Servanthood isn't just, shouldn't, isn't, maybe it's not fun all the time. It's still a blessing even if it's not fun because there are so many things that you can benefit from it. You, you can learn so much by serving, especially if it's through a practical aspect like our internship or uh, just through serve through our church. You can learn so much through serving. You can, you can learn humility and it teaches you skills that are practical and that are important. Um, you can learn uh, what it means to be in a community with people who are serving alongside of you. Those types of things aren't, those aren't things that we should just uh, flippantly uh, take for granted. We should understand that those things are very important. And what it does, I think it's super important. When I was younger, the reason why I want, always wanted to be serving, I always wanted to be around people who are serving is because it kept me out of trouble. Because when my mind is focused on the things of God and my mind is focused on serving, man, it's a blessing that I don't have to be sitting at home, bored, doing nothing, twiddling my thumbs. I can be doing something useful and productive for the kingdom of God. Not only is it a blessing for me, but it's a blessing for other people. So servanthood isn't a burden for other people, man. It shouldn't be a burden for other people. If you're serving and, and it somehow in some way becomes a burden for other people, you're not doing it right. <laughs> that's our point. That's the, whole, that's the objective is we want to bless other people. Bless them with the knowledge of the kingdom of God. Bless them with the understanding. Bless them with food. Bless them with um, uh, bringing them to a service and jumping around, man, that's a blessing. And it might just seem just like another service or something like that, but there are so many people behind the scenes putting that on, making that, and blessing you. When we, we can see through all our serve teams on Wednesday nights, on Sunday mornings, on all the, all the gatherings we have, we can see that when people walk in, they might not know everything that it takes to put it on, but still there are people behind the scenes willing to serve to put it on, to be a blessing for other people. And that's awesome. And it's not always glamorous. It's not. It's, it's, sometimes you have to do the dirty work. But sometimes serving might, be seem, might seem as the fun work. And there's sometimes an attitude that people have uh, where it's like even stage, even being on stage um, uh, with, our, with our awesome worship team and stuff like that, they may, oh, well, I don't want to serve there because uh, it's, you know, it's too scary or I don't want to serve there in the, in the cafe because, you know, it's not as glamorous or something like that. Listen, serving is more about the aim than it is about the assignment. If God assigns you to do something that you, that you don't like or that you really like, it doesn't matter. It's not about the assignment that you've been given. It's about the aim that God gives you. And he always wants to fulfill the desires of our heart, but that's if our heart's desires are his heart's desires. And when we go into uh, servant, serving as more about the assignment than the aim, what's going to happen is we're going to miss the whole. We're going to miss the whole mark. We're going to be like, oh well, I wanted to do this job, or, or that person got to this, or oh, I don't deserve to do this. It doesn't matter what you think you deserve or what you think you don't deserve. God, does, He's saying, I don't care about that. What I what I care about is I care about aiming towards more and be better and bigger things. And it's more about the aim than it is about the assignment. So if you're on stage and you're singing and you're on the worship team, that's servanthood. That genuinely is. If you, if you learn an instrument and you say, man, I want to play, that's servanthood. If you make a mean coffee and you want to jump on Bright Souls, that's servanthood. There are so many more aspects to it than just the specific assignments. And a lot of it's behind the scenes. A lot of it's in front of people. It doesn't matter where or how you do it. God wants you to be a blessing to other people. So number one is it's not a chore, it's a choice. Number two is serving shouldn't be a burden, but it should be a blessing. And number three, serving is about others, not acceptance. So let me break that down. What that means is it's about serving other people, not about personal acceptance. I shouldn't be serving 
for the purpose of other people liking me. Serving isn't about, uh, isn't, isn't centralized around me. It shouldn't be. You know, I was in, I was in, a, uh, I was in uh, a chapel one time and there was a service and this was back when I was in college. And I remember one of the speakers, he got up and he got behind the podium and he looks at the crowd and they just introduced him so he hadn't even said anything yet and the first thing he says is others. And he just stood there and everyone in the chapel was awkward. And we were all just like, others? Is that what you just said? And he just goes, others. And he repeated it like 10 times. I'm like, who is this guy? What's he saying? And he goes, that's the most important message I could preach. When you serve Jesus, your whole life, you start to realize everything I do should be about other people. Everything that I do should be about helping other people. And if I make serving about me, and if I compare my serving to other people, it's immediately about me. And that's the mentality that Jesus came to abolish. I mean, he talked to the Pharisees and he said, listen, it's not about you. Because they went around and they, they said, look at all these things that I'm doing. Look at all these great things that I'm doing. They're boasting about their servanthood. And they were comparing and contrasting themselves with other people. Jesus is like, eh, eh, that's not what it's about. You serve for other people. You don't serve for your own acceptance. You don't serve for them to accept you. The reason why we have people welcoming people as, we're, as they're walking into our gatherings on Wednesday nights and we're one, it's not because we want them to uh, love us, it's because we want to love on them. And of course we always want them to love us, but that's not the goal, that's not the aim. The aim is for us to show them love. The aim is for us to show them Jesus. And if we're doing this because we want to be, because we, the sole purpose is we want people to accept us, man, we've missed the mark. And I don't want to miss that mark. Uh, if you go to a church and you go, oh, I was at this church or uh, I was at this place and man, there's no servant's heart there. Here's my question. Why wasn't there a servant's heart there? You were there. There should have been because you showed up there. And, and, and instead of going, oh, well, they don't have a program for this or they don't, they don't do this for this type of people. Man, there's so, many, there's so many things that we might miss. I'm not saying we're perfect. I'm not saying we've done everything right. But listen, maybe God's laid something on your heart for you to do. And instead of looking at other people and going, man, they haven't served well enough. Maybe you need to jump in and serve it and lead by example. Show them what a servant is. But when we're serving for ourselves, what we do is we immediately compare ourselves to other people. We contrast ourselves with, with what they're doing and what they're serving. And sometimes it's negative and sometimes we put ourselves down. But God's saying, that's not what I want. That's not what I want for you. If you're saying, well, they're better at this, they're doing at this, but he's still telling you to do it, man, do it. Practice it. Do it with all your might. Because serving is about other people. And it's not about what I want to do. It's not about my own acceptance. It's about others. And this is, you know, this point isn't catchy. It doesn't rhyme like burden and a chore and choice. It's just serving is about others. That's it. It's really simple. And it's, a, it's probably one of the most far out missed marks out of the whole thing. When Jesus got down on his feet, on his knees, and he washed the feet of the disciples, he did that for them. He didn't do that for himself. He is God, people. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. When I walk into a church, I want that church, when I walk into any church, if it's our church or, or anywhere else, man, I want them to know, wow, I have a servant's heart. Wow, I love them. And I'm doing this for them. I'm not doing this to get things out of them. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this because God has laid them on my heart, not me on theirs. And if, and if I'm on their heart, cool. And if, I, you know, if they serve me something, cool. That's awesome. I love that. I love getting to see other people utilizing their gifts and stuff like that. But the reason I do what I do, the reason why we, we as a ministry need to do what we do is for other people. And it's really that simple. See, Jesus replied this uh, after he washed their feet. He said, you don't realize what now I am doing but later you will understand. In the moment, he didn't get the recognition. In the moment, he didn't get them going like, oh, he's being such a servant. They were like so confused, the disciples. They're like, what is Jesus doing right now? What's going on? They didn't realize it. And he says, later you will realize. So it's not about instant gratification. It's about humility. And that doesn't mean that you should toss out wisdom and guidance. And what I mean by that is this. Servants shouldn't wait for other people to move to serve. 
So if you see someone who needs something, if you need someone that needs help, a real true servant doesn't wait for other people to move to then be like, okay, I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to help that person who spilled their, their coffee. <laughs> no, that's not. And as simple and as trivially as that is, a lot of us, we get caught up on this, in this like social world where, well, I don't want to feel awkward or I don't want to feel uh, uncomfortable. No, 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 no. We're meant to be that way. <laughs> God designed us to do that. He designed us to push beyond those barriers. And, if, and you shouldn't wait for your friend to go talk to this person about Jesus for you to do it. Or he, you shouldn't wait to serve because your friend signed up for it as well. You shouldn't wait for um, other people to do things for you to do them. God laid something on your heart. Man, I encourage you, do it, even if you don't understand it. We don't do it for the recognition, but we do it for the affection of showing them the love of Jesus Christ. So that's point number three. Point number three. Point number four is this last point, and uh, we're going to wrap this up, and uh, we're going to have an awesome night, and uh, I encourage you. But I, I really want us to really dive in and really soak in this last point. Serving is e an inter eternal investment with a practical intention. So serving is eternal. It's an eternal invest investment with a practical intention. What does that mean? That's a, that's a mouthful. I'm getting, I'm getting uh, tongue-tied just saying that. What it means is that it has so much practical value right now in this moment. Let me ask you this. Why did Jesus wash their feet? A lot of people would say, well, it's to show his, hum it's to show his humility. I believe, yes, he did. But the reason he said, I don't want to give you a bath because you already cleaned yourself. He's saying, I'm going to wash your feet. Because back in the day, they used to wear sandals. And when they'd walk everywhere in the dust and the dirt and sandals, their feet would get dirty. Jesus cleaned their feet because their feet were dirty. Because there's practical value to it. There's practical value to the reason we do what we do. If you say, hey, I want to serve on a serve team. I want to make coffee. You make coffee because people want to buy coffee. <laughs> you, make, you, you serve at the link because people need practical events. They need all of the info. You serve on a worship team because we need people to sing. And we have all these practical things, but it has not only practical intention, but it's an eternal investment. It's investing not only in just like the things of right now, it's practical to right now, but it has at the end, at the tail end, it has an eternal investment. The eternal investment is huge because it teaches you so many things. And, and, and you know, we, <laughs> the world works so hard at increasing sin options. It does. It works so hard at increasing all the things. You can go to this club. You can do this. They're constantly making new ways, new things, new sin options. They're constantly innovating. Why aren't we working harder to increase salvation options? We should be hard workers. That's what Christ intends for us. He doesn't want you to get, in, get in, uh, involved just because he wants you to get involved. I believe that there's spiritual and eternal investments in it, but there's also a practical need, man. We got people to reach. We got things to do. We got so much ground to be taken. There's, God has so much more that he wants to do. And I encourage you, like, be a part of a serve team. If that's getting involved on a, on a Wednesday night, man, there are so many opportunities where we'd love for you to get involved. And if you just connect with us, uh, you can go on weareonyouth.com and go to our, um, go scroll all the way down on the homepage and there's a connect. We'd love to connect with you. Say, I want to serve in some way. How do I get involved? Uh, whether it's helping out in the loft, uh, being a loft coordinator, or it's being a part of uh, an, our usher team or anything like that, man. We would love for you to get involved. Not because, not only because we have things to do. Us, listen, we have things we got to get done. There are things, there are people that we want to reach. And it takes the most practical thing, like passing a bucket, like watching over our loft, like being a part of uh, a worship team. It takes practical, practical things. And those practical things start building up, start building up. And what happens is we have such an eternal investment. It, it, it now investing in eternity because now we get to invest our time into this ministry. And being a part of this ministry is going to invest in people's futures, in people's lives, past, past death. That's the reason we do what we do. We want Christ to be reached to other people. And we want to be his hands and feet when we do it. So tonight, as, as we watch online, I encourage you, um, serve someone today if, in a practical way. Maybe, 
Maybe it's uh, at home. Maybe it's cooking dinner tonight. Or if it's just having a, a mindset of servanthood. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's you say, man, I, I've been wanting to get involved and we are one. I've been wanting to get involved, but I don't know how or I haven't figured it out or I've been too scared. I've been letting that, that guide me. Maybe I've been comparing myself to other people. Don't worry about that stuff tonight. I encourage you, get involved. Serve today. Change your mindset for the things of the future, for things that God has for you. So as I pray, man, I encourage you, um, let's, let's be together servants of God. And as I, I lay myself down, um, not, as, uh, not as someone who's doing this in false humility, but genuinely, I, I'm here to serve you. Pastor Dave is here to serve you. We're here to serve each other. And when we can have that mindset, there's going to be so less problems that happen in a church. There's going to be so less problems that happen in friend groups. If the mindset that you have is, I just want them to know that I love them and I want to serve them and that they're, they mean so much to me. If we can get that mindset, so many of our human relationships will change to divine relationships because that's really the difference. That's the split between the two is that mindset of, I care so much because a divine love the love that Christ had for us was a love that laid himself down, that, the, that Jesus Christ came not to serve, but to serve. The God of the universe came to serve us. And that, that thought is just, it blows my mind every time I think about it, that Christ came for us to serve us. So as we pray, get in this mentality of servanthood. Jesus, I pray right now for your, for your people, for your church. God, we're so grateful for not only all the things that you've given us, but all the ways that we can give, all the ways that we can be a part, all the blessings it is, it's not a burden, all the choices that we can make towards you, all the investments and all of the things that we can do in your kingdom, Father. I pray for our, uh, our gathering here tonight. It's just us and a camera and the people watching. I pray that as we move forward, as we take new ground, as we do more, as we increase into new things, God, I pray that you will bless our hands. Not bless us for our hands, bless our hands. And in the end, we'll, we'll achieve eternal investment. God, I love you. Thank you for an awesome people. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.